Previously, we have looked at what classes and objects are, we've seen attributes and methods, and we've had a chance to try it out ourselves. At this point, you already have working objects, objects that can be constructed, objects in which you can perform any action you like to it, and yet yeah, it will hold its state and can be used in conjunction with other objects that have similar properties. So essentially, with the knowledge you have, you can already start doing OOP. But there are always more things to learn, and that is what we're going to be exploring in this episode of OOP. More on this after the break. Welcome back to Object Oriented Programming. Today, all I want to do is to focus on one keyword, the word static. Now, this is an interesting term, right? And you've actually written it when you wrote your public static void main. Remember, that was one of the things that you had to write without much explanation. So today, we'll delve into that and we'll see what it means. Let's think closely about the attributes and the methods we've written so far. Everything we've done describe one particular object. We're describing the color of the ball, the size of the ball, right? We're talking about one particular ball. But what if I wanted another attribute? Think about where this belongs. Let's say I wanted my ball class to hold some information about the total number of balls there are in the world. Is this something that describes one particular object? It's not, is it? It is something that I wouldn't associate with any individual ball. Instead, it's something that you know, should be stuck with the idea of a ball, with the concept of a ball, as opposed to an individual ball. That, ladies and gentlemen, is where static attributes come into play. What you can do is instead of attaching attributes to individual objects, you can also attach them to the class, like so. We are once again looking at our ball class, and let's go ahead and add in the ball counts variable. Now, in the case of Java, we will be uh, declaring it at the same place as the rest of the attributes. So right up here, we will say private, but a special thing we write this time is static. So this is a static variable, the type is integer, the name is numbers. So almost exactly the same with the exception of the static keyword. Now, for the rest of our variables, what we do is we define them for the first time in a constructor. That works because, well, these variables are associated with that particular object anyway. But not in the case for static variables. Because we want it to have a value attached to the class, we cannot wait for instantiation to give it its value. So instead, we gotta define it up front. The number of balls at the very beginning starts off at zero. Now, what do you think is a good place to increment this count? Clearly, that is when a new ball has been added to the world. In other words, when we build a new ball, we want that count to go up. Since we had two overloaded constructors the last time, we'll go ahead and copy this over to both. So we now have our count in place. What if we want to see that count? Remember, just like the rest of our attributes, our new static attribute is also private. And what that means is we need a getter for it as well. Now, here's the interesting thing. Let's write it here. Our getter also needs to be static. Hopefully that's not too confusing of a concept because the getter cannot be associated with the object if it's, you know, to retrieve a variable that is associated with the entire class. So let's go ahead and write our getter public static integer get count. And all we'll do is we'll simply return the count like so. So again, if this is a static variable compared to its non-static counterparts, then this is a static function compared to its non-static counterparts. Hopefully, everything sort of falls into place for you. The only difference is that something that's static is associated with the class and not an individual object. So let's go ahead and give this code a try. Down here in our main function, we already created two bolts, so that's great. But let's sort of simplify things a little bit and let's see how the ball count changes over time. So we're going to start by simply printing it out. So system.out.println And we're going to try and get the count of the bolts. Clearly, we need to call the getCount function. However, on whom do we call that function? Clearly, not on any individual ball, 
but the entire ball class itself, like so. So hopefully you can see the difference. If I wanted to run kick, I had to specify which ball I wanted to kick, for example, ball B. But if I wanted to talk about a static method or a static attribute, all I need to refer to is the class itself. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this a couple of times, like so. And what we are expecting to see is before creating any ball, right, this guy should print out zero. After creating one, we should see one. After creating another, we should see two. So let us go ahead and pop open our console here and give it a try. So compilation is fine, let's run it. And we see the numbers zero, one, two. So that's the idea. That's how we can use static variables to associate information and actions with an entire class instead of with individual objects. And there you go. Those have been your static methods and attributes. Again, this is another tool that OOP provides that you can use as and when your use case calls for it. That's all there is for this episode. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612TV with Nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.